Hello, Happy New Year, are we still saying that? And welcome to the Tuesday Checklist on a Friday this time, whatever will we think of next. In this episode, we all got together on a video call to discuss our most anticipated games for 2021. Turns out it's going to be a very exciting 12 months on PlayStation, and there are only five of us, so please do tell us what games you're most looking forward to in the comments. In the meantime, I'm up first, getting all excited about water graphics, obviously, but more importantly, a couple of PlayStation icons. So, the game that I am most looking forward to in 2021 is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. <sighs> I'm so excited contender. for this! Because every single time a new Ratchet & Clank game comes out, it just seems to be the game that makes you, certainly me anyway, stop and go, my new console can do this. I remember on PS3, it was Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction, I think, when it came out. Everyone was like, mm. you've got to play Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. And then on PS4, Ratchet and Clank came out again. And, um, and every time we bring out the classic line, it looks, you can just, say it. Just, it looks just like a Pixar movie. <laughs> every time. It looks there just like a is. Pixar movie. We got it. It does, um, though. But it does. That's how. And every time you like, you look at it and think, "There's no way. There's there's just no way that these games can look any better now." <laughs> but then you look at the footage for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and it is ridiculous. Like the fur on Ratchet's ear. Ratchet is a lombax, Dave. It's so um, oh, and the fur. I was waiting. That is waiting. <laughs> um, but the fur Still on his ears man. looks amazing, and the way the lighting goes through it, and Clank. Just his shiny little robot body. Oh, it just, I mean, I'm still I, in that. What? What's so funny now? You've said I, that with a shiny little robot head, Rob. <laughs> with my sh That's not what I was That's laughing. demonstrating. Yeah. His, I thought there was a. Is that ray tracing? Yeah. There, no. was a, there was a special charge to the way you said it. I don't know. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I'm very excited <laughs> about it um, because Ratchet and Clank games always seem to push visually um, what the new hardware can do. And I am still in that stage of PS5 ownership where everything is still a novelty to me. Like, I can't play games for longer than five minutes without just stopping and looking at some, like, ridiculous incidental detail, like a patch of mud in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Did you know in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, when you step in the water, like, little bubbles form around you, around <laughs> your legs? Know that. Did you just, that just want amazing. to fish? Like, there's just, you just stand there and the water ripples around you and little bubbles just pop, 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 pop. They're just all over the place. Look, I can't stop looking at it. It looks amazing. It's but anyway, bar. in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, I know I'm going to be doing the same thing. Like, every world I go to, every scene I see, I'm just going to stop and just slowly pan the camera around. And, oh, it's going to be amazing. But then, obviously, it's got the thing, right? The thing of Rift Apart is that it instantly transports you from one world or one dimension to another dimension because of, you know, I'm going to sound all markety here, but PS5's super speedy SSD <laughs> enables, <laughs> enables these amazing transitions. And it's just one of those things, isn't it? When you look at it, you're like, so video games can do this now. And I am not going to be, over, be able to get over the novelty of it. And it, it just it just looks incredible. And then there's the fact, you know, Ratchet and Clank games are always, they're always really sharply written, really funny. The platforming is always just, oh, Top notch, top notch platforming, amazing looking games. Um, what is not to be excited about? I'm excited for it as well. Is my edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna. We're gonna cut that and put that at the end of every. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for it as well. So my most anticipated game of 2021, hearing Rob talk about small, beautiful, furry ears is absolutely stray. I am so excited for this backpack cat game because we've had like a taste of it this year in Miles Morales with that lovely backpack cat. And now this year, Stray is coming for the ultimate backpack cat adventure. And I'm actually not sure what else to say about this game other than it's an adventure cat game. And I just desperately, desperately want to play it and roam these like little neon lit cities and solve mysteries and crime as a cat. I hope there's crime that I solve as a cat, but just playing as a cat is just such a, such a novel idea that I want everything to do with. I just think it's so nice. 
nice and wholesome and it's uh, it's published by Anna Purna and every time I think about it in my head I think Anna Purina like the cat food and I, I just, do that it's a nice Honestly. it's a nice parallel isn't it Dave it is a nice parallel. It's yeah. nice. And I, th I think you touched on something like, why has it taken so long for us to have a cat simulator? Like, I'm, I'm really excited about this too. Ash, we're both cat people. Yes. I don't know how many other cat people we have in the room. I know Nathan isn't so much. Rob's I'm 50, got a dog. Uh, Rosie, dog. You, you're a dog person, aren't you? I, I'm a dog person. Like, I, I when you said <sighs> cat simulator, I immediately just thought about being a jerk and just knocking everything <laughs> off But that's surfaces. really funny. But I, no, I know what you mean. That would be great to do in a video game, wouldn't it? It would I be mean, great but, to do in a video game. It's just how to be a jerk cat edition. <laughs> I do think that they have nailed that cat attitude. The cat attitude. Yeah, like, the cat attitude. I mean, like, we've only seen the trailer, but that cat wandering about, like, with incredible, immense balance. Yes, and just not caring, and backpack. Mm. Not caring, kind of doing what it wants, uh, running rings around the robots, which is harder to yeah. say than I thought when I started saying it. And I think actually, Anna, Annapurna, I tried to say Anna Purina then as well. <laughs> Annapurna, like, uh, they're just a fantastic publisher who've made some really interesting things, and this is just like another, I don't know, it's just super exciting. It's like, it could be anything. It could be. It could be. I just don't know what it's going to be like, and it's so beautiful. Yes. Sorry, I've jumped on yours. This isn't my most anticipated <laughs> game of the year, but I am excited. <laughs> no, Anna, Anna Perno with stuff like What Remains of Edith Finch, Journey. Like it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be lovely. You're playing as a cat. That's my, the main thrust of my point. Is just what, what about playing the robots? As, the ro well, the robots are there also. Oh, Apparently, I'm you make so a, excited for the robots. I'm you like, make a robot friend. Do you, <laughs> what? I've, yeah. See. I, I'm fine. I like cats. Cats are absolutely fine. But I, when I saw, I remember when I first saw it, I saw the robots and I was like, oh yeah. my God, look at the robots. Yeah, I look, uh, nice I've, droids. I've got an important thing to say, which is when I think of Anna Perna in this context, it's more Anna Perna and you could purr oh, like a cat. Oh, yes. That makes that's, more sense. That's the first thing. And the other thing oh. is, I think like talking to about sort of like icon, old video game styles of doing stuff and you'd have, you know, we'd have cartoon you alluded to the cartoonness of uh, Ratchet, and you'd have like cartoon cat characters, and I just love that now at this point, the most ex one of the most exciting things on PS5 is real cat, like the yes. most realistic cat you can get with the cat attitude and the slinky animations. And you're right, you're going to be the most balanced character of all time, and I'm here for it. I if nice. I could, if, if I could speculate momentarily, Nath, you just saying Anna Perna has made me think that all I want is to hold R2 to purr. And with the dual sense, just be like, oh, imagine oh that. man, oh man, a whole that new world of possibilities oh, has God. just that's exploded just open. That's just me. That's probably not in there, but that would be cool. Maybe that will be your health. It'll purr through the dual oh. sense, and you'll get sadder and sadder, and it'll purr less. Maybe this is my most anticipated game. I don't know. Oh, just I, I'm just the meow at the end of like the, the <laughs> teaser trailer. Well, you see its tiny little cat teeth. It's just that's the content <laughs> I am. I am here for. Stray. It won't be a stray because it will have a home in my heart. That's the. Uh, that's my most anticipated game of 2021. Stray. <laughs> I'm excited for it as well, is my addition. So my most anticipated game of 2021 is Horizon Forbidden West. Um, yes. Almost, yes. It, almost entirely. I realized, as I was like, well, what do I want to say about Horizon Forbidden West? Um, and I realized that when you choose a sequel, basically what you end up doing when you sit down to talk about it is just talking about why the original one was so good. So yeah, let's yeah. do that. Um, <laughs> The game is so well put together, that is not, which is not what I was expecting. What I was expecting was uh, a, a good looking open world game that kind of absorbed my attention. Um, I was really, really surprised and blown away by the strength of the storytelling and the characterization. Um, and there's the performance, I only know her name is Ash. Dave, you can help me out here. Ashley the, Birch. Ashley <laughs> Birch, yeah. who plays uh, Aloy. Um, just a fantastic, there's something almost like a little bit subdued about her. She's not like mm. whomping it out in every scene. She, and that makes her seem so considered and smart. And what I really, really like, I read a, uh, like a bunch of apocalyptic fiction. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and one of the things I really like is when you have uh, what this game did, which I think is true. I think whenever you think about the past or whenever you think about people sliding back into a kind of dark ages, it's easy to think of those people as stupid. And she's not stupid. She's really smart. 
but she doesn't know the things she doesn't know because she didn't grow up with the internet. Like that's the difference. And the performance really, really plays into that. Um, she's yeah, she's understated, and she gives a real sense of sort of like a modernity to her as a person, uh, which makes it so much easier to explore the world with her. And then the, the I just found the story itself to be just a banger. It was just really I wanted to know what happened next, and that's so rare in an open world game yeah. where I'm seeking out the next mission um, because I, I want to know a bit more about the story. Um, and then obviously when I think about playing on PlayStation 5 I'm excited and then there's going to be um, seeing a new part of the, the world. I think the same with um, other games like the, the Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2. Seeing recognisable bits of the world given the we messed everything up filter of uh, what happened when it's all fallen down. Um, that's always exciting and to have glimpsed some of those places uh, which are recognisable even to someone not from the States like me, like in um, uh, in San Francisco, obviously Golden Gate Bridge and some of the buildings that they have on the piers and the harbour side um, and Yosemite. Uh, I'm excited about going there. I'm excited about exploring underwater about spending yes. more time with that with that character. <laughs> and I guess weirdly, I'm not, I, there was a bit of a cliffhanger at the end of the first game. And I wanna know how that works, but it's not even the specifics of it that I'm excited about. I'm excited about being that character again and exploring the new parts of the world with her. I am excited about finding out what happens next, but it's more just that I'm confident that they're gonna tell me a story that I'm gonna get as into as I was last time. So that's why. Forbidden West for me, 2021. Yes. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I, I think there's the piece in the trailer where um, where Aloy is doing the whole bow and arrow and there's the big like machine elephant, Oliphant, or should I say, the most Lord <laughs> of the Rings-esque, like grander battle thing. That was my favorite part of that whole thing. And like, if I wasn't sold on her more horizon to begin with, then that bit absolutely sold me 5,000%. It's the bit in the trailer where she's going on the beach for me. Like she's on the back of something, a machine, riding along the beach and you can see Golden Gate Bridge in the background, I think it is, and just the waves rolling on it. That for me was like the most PS5 shot I've ever seen. I was like, oh, okay, you know, you, graphics you, now. You both oh. talked about the machines and I hadn't. Um, and of course they're a huge part, they kind of tie into the world building for me. It's so, uh, to come up, obviously, like new IP, new IP, original games are just so exciting. When, when someone brings along a new world that you fall in love with, and that's a really, really big part of it, I think there's something to do, um, the, like the animal behavior, but made a bit weird because they're machines and you don't know why they exist. And obviously that's kind of what I mean about the, the first game story being so good. But then just when you see them again, they're a real shorthand that just reminds me of being in that world like they are weird and then you do get to know them all and you know how you know you're going to fight some some of them you can use in different ways and there's going to be more of them now i don't know they're like crucial to the feeling of the game and the setting to me so yes well, I agree. if i can if i can throw in my two cents about the machines it's i can't wait to peel bits off them and <laughs> then fire them back at them again like yeah. it's such a good mechanic such a yeah. good mechanic the first game oh it's just so good like discovering these new giant machines and and tearing bits off them and and like the strategy that comes with that and getting to use their own weapons against them and getting to use them against each other. Oh, it's just such a, a, so no, a good You're hundred percent. I think you and I had this conversation when you were getting the Platinum at EGX and maybe I was talking to you about it as well, Rob. And from the very, it goes back to the very first days of um, video games playing for me when I had a Spectrum and I would buy a game and the screenshots would be from an Amiga and it just <laughs> wouldn't be quite what I thought, you know? And I think, when I saw the trailers for the first um, mm. uh, Horizon game, you're like, am I really going to be able to individually take down bits of it? And like, is this all going to be real time? And I'm selecting different traps. And is this real? And I'm strategizing on the fly. And there's loads of physics happening to this enormous creature. Is that going to happen? And then the fact it does, you're just like, wow. oh, that's amazing. And for it to, to work and perform well and, and be and actually fun as well as just doing all those things was incredible. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for it as well, is my addition. Ah, spooky spooks for my most anticipated <laughs> game of 2021. I put the, it is an aesthetic. I put the, uh, now the aesthetic can go now because I'm not actually scary. <laughs> oh, I but, was worried, Rosie. You have <laughs> I know. My heart's gone up a bit. I, I have that effect on people. It's fine, I scare <laughs> everyone. But my most anticipated game for 2021 is Resident Evil Village. Hence the hood to make it, it a bit sense. more spooky. It makes yes. sense. 
Uh, this was really tough for me to decide, obviously, between the games you guys have mentioned and also Oddworld Soulstorm. I'm like, oh my god, but Resident Evil Village, I'm just unbelievably excited for this to see how, um, rather than focusing on, like, you know, a big zombie outbreak, you're more kind of in, like, a... A, a witchcrafty, I'm presuming, uh, sort of village? I mean, it is called Resident <laughs> Evil Village. <laughs> I think we can presume there's a village involved. Yeah. There's, there's a village somewhere in there, but it's like, <laughs> it's got it's got more kind of, um, I don't want to say voodoo, but there's a moment in one of the trailers when like they've got a symbol on the table and all of these villagers seem to be holding hands and they're chanting this There's sort an of, occult like, feel to it, yeah, yeah. right? That's, folk, that's folk, the word I'm looking folk for. Folk horror type thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm looking for. I couldn't hey, think of the word. Hey, and Rosie, can I ask you some key questions about Resident Evil Village? Go on. I know the Umbrella Corporation uh, was responsible for the alphabet virus at the very beginning of the game. And then some of them seem to have nothing to do with it at all. And I'm excited because I enjoyed Seven. But then at the end of Seven, it was kind of like, and you know it was the Umbrella Corporation what did all of this horror. And do you are you excited about it because it's a continuation of Seven? Or are you excited about it because it, it feels a bit like Four? Or because Chris is back? Like, what is your thing? Well, you mentioned Chris coming back. I haven't even got to that point yet, but I'm just excited for, to answer all of it. I'm excited for all of it. I'm excited for <laughs> to see how Umbrella is involved with this village because I mean I'm gonna guess that like you know they probably did an evil Umbrella experiment on someone at one point. That's they let bet. that that monster go free into the into the forest because you know at the beginning of the of the trailers there's like oh a young girl was getting bellies f for her father and when got lost in the woods i'm like what if she got lost in the woods and then like an umbrella monster then starts running up to her and then he's like <laughs> and then like you know and then but does it all spread I, I that way i can't help but laugh when you say umbrella monster just <laughs> <laughs> it's a very visual idea <laughs> but it's but it's like but how are they involved and to what extent are they involved? Because they're, they're like always a, a, involved. I they're wouldn't always be surprised involved. if Wesker comes back. Oh, yeah. if so Wesker under if the Wesker same umbrella. Back. Oh, oh there yeah. it is, there it is. <laughs> and, like, and of course you guys have, uh, Nathan, you mentioned it, but Chris Redfield's coming back and I think he's the one who they're linking to like, you know, his story will end. And Chris Redfield has been such a huge part of the Resident Evil franchise oh. and he's such a brute of a character. Like, you know, he's gone through zombie outbreak after outbreak after outbreak after devastation and, and all this stuff. He's gone through it. He's like a really Poor damaged guy. man probably at this point. <laughs> and you can really see it. You can really see it so far in Village. Like, you know, he's no longer like in his uh, stars uniform, green, I'm going to be a hero, I'm a policeman, look at me go. He's now just in nothing, he's wearing at the moment all black and he's got really, like, whatever he's seen, he's got at the moment loads of shadows on his face and he's got like a grisly beard and grisly hair. Like, he's just taking no, no rubbish from anyone anymore. And a big goth. I mean, he, yeah, big, <laughs> and he, like, on the trailer as well, Mia's just on the floor, he just grabs a gun, he's just like, and then He that's must it. have a good reason for that, that's what I was that's, thinking. He must must have a good reason for it but I'm like what what's Chris Redfield doing in this game where, where and the monsters as well they're not zombies really they're more like you know beasts type things and it's mm. like what if this is a virus that Umbrella probably has let loose if they have that is then it's like what is the virus what's it capable of what's it got to do with Chris what's it got to do with Ethan because Ethan and Mir were just living happy normal lives or I were mean, they Rosie we just don't they? know that Mia's telling a creepy story for no reason, and I'm siding with Ethan. Like, Maybe that's why she got shot because the story was too scary for the children. Will you too, shut up? Too scary. Just no. I like this. It's all this excitement for Resident Evil Village, and also it's going to be in our RE engine again. And the team have done such a fantastic job with the RE engine since I think uh, Resident Evil Seven was the first time they used it. But since then, they've had like our uh, Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Three, and those games are just absolutely stunning to look at in the engine and I can't wait to see what they how they use that engine and also in the next generation console being the PS5 how they're going to put all of their knowledge and experience with the engine now and the technology how they're going to put it into the next Resident Evil so I am very very excited for it I'm excited for it as well is my addition Yes, tis I, the Star Wars man. <laughs> I wonder what game I'm excited for. Not Resident Evil Village, if I'm honest. Uh, but yes, a nice story about good and evil that transcends our own... Oh, it's what just What about Star Wars. tax federations? <laughs> you shut up. What about trade you shut embargoes? Up. You shut up. No, 
It's uh, it is of course Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga, yes! um, which I am really, really, genuinely so excited for. Uh, and and uh, yes, I suppose this does come with a big kind of uh, disclaimer that I'm a huge Star Wars fan, um, but. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think you have to have an interest in Star Wars to be excited about it. But as a Star Wars fan, it just looks absolutely incredible. I was very lucky with Nath to go and see a little preview of it at E3 a couple of years ago. And honestly, from what I saw at E3, this just looks absolutely incredible. It's like a way of exploring the, the movies and the, the lore. In a, like I've never experienced before. Um, we saw, you know, like flying through space above Tatooine and landing in like this hub world and visiting Jabba's palace. We saw like random events with like a huge um, star destroyer just entering hyperspace or exiting hyperspace right by the Millennium Falcon. And we were in an asteroid field and suddenly Tie Fighters came out and started shooting us. Like it was, it's unscripted stuff like that that is really exciting for me. Plus the fact that obviously it's it's all nine films. Um, yes, include even the trade federations in there. Thank, <laughs> thank God. Um, I mean, maybe I'll just pick the three original films and stick with those. But no, I mean, like, I, I want to see all those locations. Even some of the movies that aren't my favourites um, still have a special place in my heart, and I want to explore um, all these different like locations. Um, we've just recently had the the Mandalorian finish over Christmas, which I really, really loved, and it got my Star Wars juices flowing again. And I went back to uh, Battlefront 2, which I think is is fantastic. And and you know the the developers, the, the Lego games, they always put in so much love to the details. They always have such a wry sense of a thing. It, it, they make it funny and they can poke fun at it without it being offensive or uh, you know uh, to anyone who really loves it it's like it's really f from a, a warm place and um, so I'm excited about that like it's not just going to be kind of clinical here's exactly what this looks like but it, there'll be nice little nods and winks um, for to the, the wider Dave, even in like the trailer things, I think I remember we were putting together a preview for this year and even in the trailer for the game the recreate the scene of Ray going to find Luke and it turns around and it's two of those like puffin creatures, I can't remember what they're called, but wearing <laughs> yeah, his cloaks. Porks. Yeah, porks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, even that just made me laugh. Just, they, they know the right way to do it. Do you know, Dave, I've got, a, I've got a wider point, which is I remember when the, when the LEGO games first started to do Star Wars, um, way back was when I very, very first started uh, working for a, a PlayStation magazine. And at that time, you and I had just seen um, around this time we were in the midst of a second you know this this new trilogy which you know has not landed completely brilliantly and seeing this was I felt a bit like that like this is a and it's just a great way to everyone's taking it so seriously and you know yeah. like oh the future of Star Wars and this world so important then you realize that it's just fun it's supposed to be fun it's supposed to be this thing you loved as a kid that you can go yeah. back to and I totally agree about it's like the Marvel or the DC games it's just giving you a bunch of and it is like a toy box it's like just giving you all of these things to play with I'm on, yeah. I, I agree with you I think exactly right it is a toy box which is so you know perfect for, for Lego games and just I just remember that that Star Destroyer like exiting hyperspace and it, and and the presenter said like we could land on there and we could go and walk around it and it's like completely modeled and it's like millions of bricks and my like tiny mind was just <laughs> exploding with the possibilities of just doing that's so all I want to do is that uh, let alone then getting to explore all the other places. I'm I'm really really excited about it. It's uh, it's been it's been one of my most anticipated titles since that presentation, genuinely. And so, this is the year. <laughs> I'm excited for it as well. Is my edition. So my most anticipated game of 2021, listening to Rob talk about small, beautiful, furry ears, has me thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a furball? You're, a furball. <laughs> You're thinking about them so much. It's amazing. amazing. Excuse me. I was trying to not cough. Turns out Ash is so excited about games with cats in that she's conjured the spirit of one in her throat. Powerful. Anyway, let us know in the comments whether you're a dog or a cat person. Give us a like if you're a nice person and click the notification bell so you're always up to date with all our videos on everything PlayStation. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again soon. PlayStation.